So hi, I'm Todd Mickelson and I'm going to show you iDetect. iDetect is a uh, lie detection technology that we've developed. And you can see the makeup of the, sta the standard station here. It consists of a standard computer, so a standard monitor, keyboard, and CPU, with some additional items that make the product more useful. First of all, we have a data locker over here, which is a device in which we capture the encrypted information from each test. This is to help protect the uh, information so that it's not manipulated or changed. In addition, we have um, the most important item here, the eye tracker. This is a high performance infrared camera that can detect changes up to a tenth of a millimeter in the individual's eyes. So during the test itself, the eye tracker is going to be capturing 60 frames per second of everything that's occurring with the individual's eyes, and that information is encrypted and stored on the data locker. In addition, we have a chin rest, which is primarily for keeping the subject's head still while they answer a series of true-false questions on the test itself. So with that as a background, what you're looking at here on the screen is the iDetect application. The application is used for both setting up the test and administering the test. You can see that uh, I have a list of tests that I have preloaded. Um, the advantage here is uh, the individual who's going to administer the test can come in in advance if they know who the test subjects are and they can um, pre-enter the type of test that the individual is going to take, the name of the individual, and their employee number or some other unique identifier that is associated with the, the test itself. So you can see that I have uh, queued up a number of tests in advance. Um, these tests are tests that are included in the product that we have um, developed and made available. Uh, things like being able to test for whether or not someone uh, has stolen in the past from a previous employer. Whether or not someone has had uh, issues with drug use, uh, illegal drug use in the past, at a, um, uh, or, or whether perhaps they've been involved in uh, accepting bribes uh, in a previous um, uh, employment situation. The kinds of things that an organization would want to know prior to hiring a, an individual. So with that as a background, um, let's come up here. Uh, I'm going to select uh, a test that uh, Lindsay Moore is going to take. And you'll see that uh, the first thing that we're going to do is connect the eye tracker. So, um, and let me have Lindsay come over and actually for this part. So Lindsay, why don't you come on over and sit down. All right. So Lindsay's going to click on the connect button here to make sure that the eye tracker is recording and available. So go ahead and select connect and say OK. All right, now let's, um, we're going to go through a process of making sure we understand where uh, Lindsay's eyes are so that the camera can appropriately track what's happening with them. So go ahead and click on eye tracker and choose the telemetry option. So this screen enables us to identify where Lindsay's eyes are. You can see that uh, they're looking at the middle of the screen and she is roughly 60 centimeters away from the screen. So this is the, the settings that we want uh, prior to beginning the test. So go ahead and close that, Lindsay. And then um, let's go through a calibration process. So click on eye tracker and choose calibrate. So Lindsay's going to see a little red dot on the screen and follow it with her eyes, which it happens that quickly. And then we're going to go through uh, a second, secondary step uh, that we call validation. So go ahead and click on eye tracker and validation. And once again, she's going to see a red dot that she's following with her eyes. And this is allowing the eye tracker to understand how Lindsay looks and where she looks to ensure that we're going to capture the right information. We can see here that the calibration and validation process was successful, um, where it was able to synchronize the two steps. So let's go ahead and accept this. And now we're going to go in and begin the test. So Lindsay will click on the test menu and choose Start. And before she begins, it's going to prompt her for some information. 
can see it's already pre-configured her ID and her name, but now she's going to choose her gender, her age, and also specify whether or not she's wearing glasses or contact lenses. And then she has the ability here to take a photo, which would be included in the report itself. So we'll go ahead and take the photo and then say OK. Now uh, the test has begun, and Lindsay is presented with some instructions that tell her um, what, what's going to take place. And then she's given an opportunity to take some uh, practice uh, uh, questions. Uh, there are five questions here about some neutral information, such as are all squares and rectangles, um, uh, do they all contain 90 degree angles? Uh, do older people frequently wear eyeglasses to help them read? Those types of things. And she's merely uh, selecting either a, a key that maps to true or a key that maps to false. And while this is taking place, we're capturing all the information on the data locker. After she takes the practice test, she will actually go into the test itself where some additional instructions are presented, and then she's given the ability um, to, to answer the questions. Now each test uh, contains uh, approximately 250 questions. Um, some of the questions are on the same topics that we ask multiple times in multiple ways to uh, get a better understanding of really uh, what's, what's taken place. And then once she finishes, We'll give her just a minute to get through the rest of these. All right. So once she's finished, that's it. She uh, uh, can can get up and. And, and leave. Um, that's all there is to it. There's no formal interview, just a matter of taking the, 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 the test uh, questions. And then at this point, the administrator or the proctor can come in and you'll see that uh, here is the test that she took and we'll see that it is in, uh, that it is in phase two of a three uh, phase process. The first way, phase was the create the initial test, the second phase was to take the test, and the third phase, the examiner can um, put in any information about the test itself. Perhaps um, when, the, when the individual arrived they were very nervous, or perhaps the power went off during the test. We, those are the types of things we would want to record uh, before we save the test. So let's go in here to save it, and you'll notice that uh, we're given the opportunity to specify whether the subject was guilty, uh, uh, meaning whether they confessed guilt during the test, after the test, or not at all. Well, she did not, so we will say no. Uh, and then we have the opportunity to put in some notes here about the test itself. All that information will be stored in the report. So we say OK. And you'll notice that her test has gone to phase three and it's now ready to be uploaded to a secure server in the cloud where we will perform uh, an analysis using proprietary algorithms to identify whether or not she was being deceptive or truthful and uh, we will generate a detailed report that um, uh, can be made available to the hiring manager or the manager if it's an employee taking the test. You'll see here we have the ability to synchronize uh, the data that is sitting on the data locker that we've captured, that process will push the data up to the cloud, run the report, and then we can go in to the dashboard and actually view the report in less than five minutes after we upload the data. So as you can see, iDetect is simple to use. It's efficient. It's non-invasive. Um, the subject can take the test in approximately 30 to 35 minutes. Um, and the results can be produced uh, in under five minutes after the uh, data is uploaded to the cloud and processed. This technology will help you as an organization to preserve a culture of honesty and integrity. So as we mentioned, after the data is synchronized to the secure server in the cloud and a report is generated and processed, 
This report can be accessed through the Converis dashboard. The dashboard is um, the way in which an authorized individual, such as the VP of HR or VP of Security, uh, within an organization has the ability to go and see uh, the specific results on a specific report of an individual. So over here you can see that the uh, individual would log in using an account ID and PIN. Okay, can log in with their ID and as they log in they're presented with in the home page the ability to see all the tests that are associated with that login ID. So here I have a list of tests that have been taken. You'll notice that over to the left I have the ability to um, generate a PDF version of the report for a given subject. Uh, I can go into the report itself uh, by clicking on their name. I see the subject ID that was typed in. Um, as well as over here on the right hand side a score. This is the credibility index score. A score of 50 or higher represents that the individual was truthful and a score uh, of, of less than 50 indicates that the uh, individual was deceptive. If I just go into one of these reports you'll see that um, we once again represent the uh, credibility index score uh, on a scale with a graphic so that you can more easily see that in this case this individual scored a 75 uh, which is green which represents uh, we believe they were uh, truthful and you can see the total number of questions that they answered the number that they missed um, the picture of them uh, other information such as their age whether they were wearing glasses, and then a comprehensive list of the test questions and how they responded to them.